So the Cavs took a seven point lead at the half and the Celtics just took over outscoring the Cavs 55 to 33 over the final 22 minutes of the game taking a commanding 2-0 lead in front of their home crowd. Max is this more about the Celtics or the Cavs? The Celtics of course the Celtics deserve enormous credit here. The Cavs we know what they are they're LeBron James sometimes all-star Kevin Love and company and they struggled against Indiana but they won and they swept Toronto. So, you know, what was that about, right? Those are good teams. The Celtics are a very good team. That's maybe a great one. I mean, with Kyrie and Gordon Hayward, you figure they'd be a great team and an actual challenge for, at this moment, what looks like Golden State, but whoever comes out of the West. But even without those guys, the Celtics are a very good team. Why was this about the Celtics? Stephen A., LeBron get any, any points in transition? Like, any at all? Did he get out in transition at all? How many uncontested Nobody. shots did he take out of 29? One. They contested 28 of LeBron's 29 shots. And then they shot, they shut down everyone else, too. I mean, what a defensive job by the Boston Celtics. And Stephen A., it reminded me a lot of game one with Houston and the Warriors, in that you could see LeBron going off early oh my god he was doing everything he had a million points in the first quarter and you thought to yourself just like with Harden and the Rockets damn this guy is working awfully hard for not much of a lead it's like they have to work a lot harder than the Celtics do just to kind of barely keep their heads above water and sure enough class told over time this was about the Boston Celtics Brad Stevens Al Horford, Marcus Smart, you know the cast, Rozier, Tatum, Brown, the Boston Celtics. Listen, I'm going to say that I'm not taking any credit away from the Boston Celtics because they've been absolutely terrific. Their collective, uh, their collective, just their collective effort rather that they put forth. It's incredibly impressive. There's no doubt about that. But I'm looking at the Cavs because more so than the Celtics' greatness, what resonated with me was the awfulness of the Cleveland Cavaliers. They were just absolutely pathetic and embarrassing in the second half. There's just no way around it. Um, the, you know, the lackluster effort, the defensive lapses. I mean, SportsCenter did an exceptional job last night of highlighting some of the open shots that they took place. There's nobody within 15 or 20 feet of a defender. Jeff Van Gundy highlighted how folks were not even rotating out on the wing to defend the Boston Celtics. It damn near looked like a game of horse the second half. That's how awful Cleveland's defense was. And it was clearly due to a lack of effort. It wasn't anything schematically or anything like that. It was a flagrant lack of effort, a level of, of alarming indifference that everybody should pay attention to. And obviously, when you look at the ineptitude of a J.R. Smith, and a George Hill. I mean, it's just of it's just of epic proportions. Their starting backcourt of the Cleveland Cavaliers got outscored by Boston starting backcourt 41 to 3. 41 to 3. J.R. Smith, awful. Not a single point, not a single basket, nothing. I mean, we don't even know if he passed gas for crying out loud. That's how bad it was. And I'm not trying to be disrespectful to J.R. Smith. I got no problems with him. Got no problems with J George Hill. I expect more from them, and they've got to look in the mirror and say, damn, it's no excuse for us for being that bad. And I'm also going to throw a little shade on LeBron James in this sense. You're 260 plus pounds, man. You go into the game, you know you got to go down low. You know you got to take the game into the post. You know there's no way on earth that you're going to beat the Boston Celtics over the course of 48 minutes with their youth, their athleticism, their length, their energy, their defensive tenacity. You are not going to beat them shooting perimeter shots. LeBron is a brilliant basketball mind. You've got to know this. That's not most of the blame, of course not. We know most of the blame is on his supporting cast. But you got to know when and how to stop the bleeding. And he had 21 points in the first quarter, but he wasn't really going into the post. Now, that might have been because of the shot to the jaw he took from Jason Tatum's shoulder, and he may not have been the same. All I'm saying is you're 260 plus pounds. You gotta take, you gotta play a man's game and take it to the post because you're not beating the Boston Celtics being on the perimeter. But ultimately what it comes down to is that J.R. Smith was left in the lineup. He was God awful along with George Hill. And as a result, it just had a contagious and contaminating effect on everybody outside of Kevin Love. Cleveland was so awful 
that it's hard to just look at Boston and say, I, well, you know what? They deserve all the credit because well, Cleveland I mean, was that First bad. of all,